Hi guys, this is Dr. Shimmy. Today we're gonna to work on an endocrine question. I'd like to introduce you guys to a unique methodology we've created to help you answer questions effectively. First, you'll read the question to understand what is being asked of you. The question here asks, what changes are most likely seen in this patient? Based on the question, clearly this patient is going through some sort of change. Your next step should be to go through your answer options to give yourself an idea of what these changes might be related to. As you can see, the answers are related to changes in thyroid function tests, specifically serum T4, T3, and RT3 or reverse T3. Now go through the vignette and filter through the history and physical findings. Keeping in mind that you're looking for a condition related to changes in thyroid function. Focus on significant findings while ignoring the extra details questions usually include. Important points here are 57-year-old female. She has a known history of colon cancer. Recently, she had surgery, four days after which she presented with drowsiness and high fever. Her temperature was 40 degrees Celsius. She is hypotensive, tachycardic, and tachypnic. Her skin is warmed and flush. Based on these findings and what you've learned, you should be thinking septic shock. Urine was analyzed and was positive for leukocyte, esterase, and nitrates. And if you remember, positive leukocyte and nitrates are commonly seen in gram-negative organisms, specifically E. coli. So clearly she has a UTI. Vignette confirms urinary tract infection caused her to have her sepsis. This vignette does not discuss any changes in signs and symptoms related to thyroid function. So what does this have to do with changes related to thyroid function tests? Have you heard of U-thyroid 6 syndrome, also known as non-thyroidal illness syndrome? This is commonly seen in critically ill patients. Patients are symptomatically euthyroid, but when thyroid function tests are performed, they're abnormal. Before we talk about abnormal, let's relearn normal. The hypothalamus secretes thyroid-releasing hormone, stimulating the anterior pituitary to secrete thyroid-stimulating hormone. TSH triggers the thyroid gland to release T4 and T3. T4 and T3 then have negative feedback on both the anterior pituitary and hypothalamus. T3 is the most metabolically active form of thyroid hormone, but only 20% is released by the thyroid gland. So where does the rest come from? Most of T3 is converted peripherally from T4 by the enzyme 5' monodeagonase. T4 also is converted to RT3 or reverse T3, which is the inactive form of thyroid hormone. Now back to the question, what happens to hormones in euthyroid 6 syndrome? Depending on how ill the patient is, the hormones increase or decrease accordingly. The most important initial change is the increase in reverse T3 followed by a decrease in T3 and a decrease in serum T4. It is suggested that reverse T3 is increased not only due to an increase in conversion of T4 to reverse T3 instead of T3, but also a reduced breakdown in reverse T3 to T2 as seen in this diagram. This phenomenon is thought to be protective as it avoids excessive tissue catabolism commonly seen in critically ill patients. Now that you understand the syndrome, let's answer the question. I know most students get intimidated by answers involving arrows, like the one seen in this question. It looks confusing, but if you take it step by step, column by column, it should be simple. Or you can go to the column that makes most sense to the case and start eliminating options from there, like we're going to do here. RT3, or reverse T3, as we know, is the first to increase, so we can eliminate B and E already. Now, for the other columns, we know that T4 and T3 actually decrease in euthyroid 6 syndrome. Going through the first column, we can eliminate A, and going through the second column, we can eliminate C. So you're left with D, and the correct answer is D. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.